Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So today we're going to talk about the 6th generation Toyota 4Runner, which we can expect to arrive in 2025. So if history repeats itself, typically we see the new generation of a Toyota Tacoma one year prior to the new generation of a 4Runner. We saw that back in 2016 with the Tacoma coming out, the 3rd gen, and then in 2017, you know, the 4Runner came out, the, the new, well, new at the time, 5th generation 4Runner. So in this video, I'm going to throw up a handful of leaked render, I shouldn't say leaked, but renderings of that 6th generation 4Runner and talk through the things that we can expect to be a part of that new 4Runner. So if you guys don't know, I have owned probably seven, eight different 4Runners throughout the last few years. It is my favorite Toyota uh, out of all of them. I love the Land Cruiser too, but I think I typically gravitate to the 4Runner for a few other reasons, right? So in this video, I'm gonna talk through the good, the not so good, and at the very end, I'll, I'll offer you my recommendation of if you should get that new sixth generation 4Runner over a fifth generation right now. So let's start with the good. We expect this to have the same exact power plant as what we're gonna see in the 2024 Toyota Tacoma, the ones that are starting to hit the lots now. We expect to see that 2.4 liter turbocharged engine or the 2.4 liter turbocharged iForce Max. So the iForce Max is pretty impressive. Those numbers are, are pretty wild. So you got 326 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque. Those are staggering numbers coming from a four-cylinder engine. So that's what we can expect to see. We expect to see an eight-speed automatic transmission or a six-speed manual. That, I think, is awesome. So I think that's going to carry over, right? We're seeing that in the Tacoma. We're going to likely see that in the sixth-generation 4Runner as well, which is incredible, a, a manual transmission. It is going to sustain that rugged body-on-frame design, which we see uh, on, on the Tacoma as well as the other Toyota platforms. We see it within the Tundra, the Sequoia, and that is the TNGAF uh, rugged body on frame design. Uh, so it's a multi-use platform, of course. They just make adjustments for various vehicles. Uh, so I think that's good. We're not losing that body on frame design, which I think is a core piece of what makes the 4Runner special and what has always made it special, in my opinion. Uh, in addition to that, we are likely gonna see TRD Pro and a Trail Hunter option, which is pretty sweet. I'm excited to see a Tacoma Trail Hunter in person in the flesh, uh, as I do think that is a pretty cool idea uh, in general. Uh, it is gonna have some improved off-road prowess. We're gonna see rear and center diff locks, uh, as, well, as well as the tra traditional off-road goodies that we've gotten used to at this point. Crawl control, multi-terrain selection, things of that nature, which we would expect to see on it and to be improved, perhaps. Um, we are going to see these massively produced, and I think this is very important to know, especially for, for my audience here. You know, when it comes to the pricing of these vehicles, I think a lot of dealerships are going to be licking their chops when they start getting their first wave of sixth generation 4Runners. So they're going to be very interested in slapping you with an ADM, additional dealer market uh, market adjustment, uh, on top of MSRP. They're going to try to get you with a five or a $10,000 markup over a sticker price. Don't let them do that because this is going to be a massively overproduced vehicle. I shouldn't say overproduced, but wild, wildly produced, right? So... Currently, we see the fifth generation 4Runner being produced at a rate of 115 to 145,000 units per year. I expect to see that or more with the sixth generation 4Runner. But on that note, where are we seeing production of the Tacoma going? We're seeing the Tacoma being produced now in Mexico entirely, right? Solely in Mexico, that Tacoma is being produced. I do think, unfortunately, we are going to see that 4Runner move from Japan over to Mexico. And... You know, although they have a state-of-the-art facilities down there and, and their, their manufacturing plants or assembly lines are incredible, I do have my, my concerns with that, right? My concerns with, you know, the overall quality control coming out of that facility in the long run. I'm talking next three, five, ten years. You know, are we going to see some clear indicators that this 4Runner is being produced out of Mexico versus Japan? Japan, the Japanese take tremendous pride in building these vehicles. Right? And you can tell. You can tell in the fit and finish of your vehicles that they really are second to none when it comes to fit and finish and overall quality control. Um, and I wonder if that is going to be the case or continue to be the case coming out of Mexico. Uh, but I digress. You know, when it comes to the actual uh, body lines of this new 6th generation 4Runner, based on the renderings and a couple ideas that are being thrown out there on the internet, yeah, I do think we can expect it to look very similar to that GX550. It's going to have very wide body fender flares, which is going to look incredible, I'm sure. Um, it's going to have a functional hood scoop, because it is sporting now a, a turbocharged uh, power plant, that 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, uh, or the hybridized iForce Max, right? So I think it's going to be a functional hood scoop, 
which will be a nice change. And just overall, the aggressiveness of the headlights and that front end are going to look very, very awesome. Very similar to what we see in that Tacoma, I would argue, right now. Uh, the fourth generation Tacoma. Let's move to the not so good. This is what I think is going to rub people the wrong way. Here's just a few things. So for starters, this is the smallest thing. I'll get out of the way. But there's a lot of talk of potentially seeing a removable top, kind of a, a throwback to the original Forerunner uh, of the late 80s, right, of the 80s. Uh, being able to remo remove that back top and have that bench seat out back, a lot of people are kind of theorizing that that might be a, an option for this, right? In an effort to kind of bring prices down, because we had the Land Cruiser on the horizon as well, they want to be able to differentiate the Forerunner and the Land Cruiser, the, the audiences and markets, you know, the demographic, target demographics for each of these platforms. So I don't think we're going to see that removable top. Uh, I think it's very unlikely, uh, which it could be a bummer to some. I already hinted at perhaps the largest detriment, I think, and that is the fact that it's going to be built out of Mexico. They're moving it there, A, because it's already pretty much in line with the Toyota Tacoma that's built entirely out of there, but they needed to make room for the Land Cruiser. And the Land Cruiser nameplate is, is a nameplate that the Japanese take tremendous pride in, uh, so they're keeping that in Japan on purpose. You know, they're building that in Japan with the Land Cruiser, with that GX 550, with the LX 600, the Lexus, um, but they're moving this to Mexico. And I, I think that's a huge miss, and, and I'm not excited about that part of it. I personally take a tremendous pride in driving my forerunners of the past, knowing that they came out of Japan, right? And they're built extremely well. So let me know what your thoughts are on that in particular. Um, we are likely to see a price jump. That's my, my prediction anyway. You know, based on what we're seeing with the Toyota Tacoma, the jump from the third gen to the fourth gen, I think we're gonna see anywhere from a five to $7,000 price jump, MSRP price jump, across the board. Maybe a little bit less on the lower luster trims. You know, on the SR5 model, we might see about a 3,000 price jump, base jump, but five to seven is where I think we're gonna land. Um, it's still cheaper than the Land Cruiser, but barely at that point, really. And the TRD Pro is gonna be on par with Land Cruiser pricing, in my opinion. Currently, with the fifth generation 4Runner, if you were to buy a 2024 4Runner TRD Pro, you're gonna be spending 57, 58 grand for it. That has gone up tremendously over the last several years uh, for the same vehicles, you know, kind of wild. But by jumping that up, five to seven thousand dollars, we're looking at you know sixty-three, sixty-four, sixty-five thousand dollars for a TRD Pro sixth generation Forerunner, and that's going to be on par with what we're going to find in the Land Cruiser. The Land Cruiser is going to start you know, right around you know, fifty-eight thousand dollars for the um, low. Actually, I should say about mid fifty thousands is what they said for the. Um, 1958 edition. That's going to be the base model Land Cruiser. It's going to go up even more for the first edition and, and, and the traditional uh, Land Cruiser that, that's coming out here. So now we're on par with the Land Cruiser, and that kind of begs the question, where will the Forerunner continue to fit? You know, if it's so, so similarly priced and similarly capable as a Land Cruiser, right, as a Sequoia, um, as a GX, right? So, I mean, there's so many competing platforms now between Lexus and Toyota. And I just kind of wonder how sales will continue to, to unfold for the Forerunner in particular uh, moving forward. Um, in addition to that, un unknown reliability. You guys have heard me, I kind of beat up a little bit the, the Tundra uh, for the iForce Max. I've owned a 2023 Tundra, a 23 Sequoia TRD Pro uh, that sported the iForce Max. You know, a phenomenal platform, a powertrain when it comes to performance, right? You'll never be unimpressed by how well it performs, but it just kind of always felt synthetic to me. And I always kind of wondered, part of me always wondered, like, hey, since we got rid of that 5.7 liter V8 in the previous gen Tundra, you know, what is the reliability going to look like in this hybrid iForce Max? This, this now twin turbo V6 hybrid that was in the Tundra TRD Pro. So I always kind of wonder what that longevity would look like and what that overall reliability and peace of mind uh, would look like moving forward. And we share that with this new sixth generation 4Runner and this new Tacoma. Uh, it's unknown at this point. You know, personally, whenever we make an engine a little bit more complex, when we add turbos to it, when we hybridize it, strap a battery pack to it, we're making it more complex. So even if it is on par reliability wise, like your chances of being able to kind of tear apart the engine and kind of work on it and update things appropriately kind of goes out the window a little bit. So it becomes a little bit more, I don't know, kind of out of, out of the hands of the, of the regular regular um, middle class individual, right? When it comes to working on these vehicles, you gotta take them in, you gotta take it into the shop whenever something happens to it. And I don't love that part about it. So I'll wrap up the video here with what do I recommend? Obviously I have, a, have an extreme bias toward the fifth generation 4Runner. I've owned several of them, right? I love that platform so much. 
I am confident that Toyota will get it right. You know, will it be right immediately out of the bag in 2025 when that 4Runner hits? I don't know. Typically speaking, that first year, first model year of a new generation full redesign typically has a few bugs and kinks to work out, right? But we're seeing them have the same exact powertrain, same exact tech within the current 2024 Tacoma, the new one now. So maybe they're going to work out and iron out some of those bugs and quirks that we're going to find in this new in this new powertrain here for that. So maybe by the time that 25, 2025 Forerunner does hit the lots, they maybe have fixed a couple of those initial kinks. That's my hope anyway. Toyota has historically done a very good job at developing and building great quality hybridized engines. I mean, look at, you know, look at the Toyota Prius. The Toyota Prius has a pretty good reputation at this point. You know, I hate saying it out loud, but it does, right? And, and, and I say that on purpose because I do think Toyota, you know, has, a lot, has had a lot of time to implement a lot of research and, and development into these platforms. And I'm hopeful that they will get it right with this new sixth generation 4Runner. But I do think if you have an opportunity, I'm speaking on both sides of my mouth on purpose. If you have an opportunity to buy a 2024 Toyota 4Runner, absolutely do it. And if you can get a 4Runner TRD Pro in the exclusive color, Terra, or my personal bias favorite would be uh, the new color Underground, that, that kind of that flat gray, battleship gray, love it. If you can get one at MSRP or better, which is pretty easy right now given current interest rates, I say do it, go for it. If you wanna try it, try it out, because I am confident that you can buy one drive it around for, you know, several thousand miles, you know, 15, 20, 30,000 miles. And when that new sixth generation 4Runner comes out, you'll likely be able to trade it in and get dang near, dang near what you paid for that vehicle brand new. I'm pretty confident in that, especially when we see the MSRP price hikes of that sixth generation, you know, the price range of your 4Runners could be a little bit more desirable for a lot of people, I think. And not to mention, you're going to have a lot of people with, with FOMO, people who like fear of missing out of the previous generation 4Runner, missing out on the opportunity to get that reliable platform with that 4-liter V6 five-speed automatic transmission that is unmatched reliability, unmatched peace of mind. And I think a lot of people might miss that and they might gravitate back to it within the first two years of that sixth generation 4Runner coming out. I'm pretty confident we'll see that. So I think it's a safe bet. All that to say, safe bet to buy a fifth generation 4Runner while you still can, brand new, because I don't think you'll lose a lot, even in the current uh, vehicle market right now. So. I'll wrap up the video there. Mainly want to get your thoughts on that and really pose that question again. Where will the 4Runner stand amongst all the other competition, all the other competitors that really Toyota and Lexus offer now between the Land Cruiser, between that GX, the LX600, um, you know, the, the Sequoia. There's so many options. RAV4 even to some degree, right? With their, their different trims. Where do you think the 4Runner will stack? And do you think it'd be a good idea to wait for that sixth generation 4Runner instead of buying the fifth gen right now? Thanks for watching as always. Until next time.